And then I listened to Flat Earth Dave on Sons of Liberty that I work on every Saturday. Dave, welcome to the Kate Shamarani Show, where the audience are hardcore. <laughs> wow. wow. I, I have a, a comment and a, and a question. My, uh, my comment is, I was wondering if I was going to be able to mirror this on YouTube, and within the first three words, I realized, not a chance. Yeah. I'm here, Kate Chavarani. It's Wednesday night. You need to use network. And you know, even though I do say it myself, I'm looking rather glam today. Um, it, but I have got my uh, welly socks on under the table because it was cold. Well, what a week it's been. I'm not going to talk too long because I've got a great guest. And uh, the one thing I will tell you is in December of 2020, 2020, we're in 23 just now. There was a scientist, surname Scully, not, not to be confused with Mulder and Scully, although it kind of reads like a script, Oxford scientist. She knew then, and they knew then. <laughs> oh, you're stupid. You're stupid. You're brainwashed. You're sheep. Meh. We had all that going on. Everyone was falling out. Then it was, are you Russia or Ukraine? Well, I'm actually neither. I'm, I'm, I'm English. Wow. Anyway, so that's what's happened this week in the press. We're being told that we've got to like this, not like that, comment on this, not comment on that. So I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to bring someone on just to get everybody really going. They're already going on Twitter. Someone's said, what an utter load of bollocks. So I told him, I did the uh, cherry emoji that he needs to, um, he seems to have put them in his mouth and out of his trousers. So, you know, people are prepared to believe that dinosaurs existed. I don't believe that one anymore. Um, sorry. Uh, they're supposed to believe that uh, we went to the moon. I, I, I uh, sometimes meet a physicist he's a mushroom picker on the forest and he told me that he did work for nasa for a while and that they always put their scientists at the worst locations they're out in the middle of nowhere and he did say that only five percent was spent on i think it was the space budget out of all their money isn't that interesting yeah well you're supposed to believe that a bit of old tin foil managed to get to the moon even though you can see the strings every now and again people want to believe don't they they want to believe that governments love them and that they're their mummy and daddy. They're not. They couldn't get a rat's ass about you. And they want to believe that doctors are always thinking in their best interests and no nurses would ever kill them. Well, not mean to. Uh, but that's that's called healthcare. Stop it. So uh what about the earth then? About it being flat. Um, do you think it's a globe hurtling through space? I don't anymore because I worked for British Airways for 10 years on long haul and I met quite a few pilots who said it's not a globe, but we can't talk about it. They, uh, I met a couple as well that told me they'd seen things, but they can't talk about that either. Then I have a very good friend, ex-military, also uh, a doctor of computer science and worked for the government on our AI for 25 years. He's super duper smart. He said to me, please tell me you don't believe that the earth is a globe. And he said, you've got to start looking. And he started sending me things and he sent me a map. And that was it for me, really. And then I got sent a book about it by a gentleman that interviewed me. And then I listened to Flat Earth Dave on Sons of Liberty that I work on every Saturday. Dave, welcome to the Kate Shamarani Show, where the audience are hardcore. <laughs> wow, I, I have a, a comment and a, and a question. My, uh, my comment is, I was wondering if I was gonna be able to mirror this on YouTube, and within the first three words, I realized, not a chance. Yeah. And yep, not a chance, and I, I love it. It's, all, it's awesome. Um, but with everything you talked about, all of the craziness that's going on in this world, the biggest question I get, Dave, what does the shape of the earth matter? Why, why are you pushing this when, when we're having this atrocity happening in the Middle East and, and, and the whole COVID nonsense and, and all of that? 
And the answer is because if you're lost in space, spinning out of control, don't know who you are, where you are, what you are, the power of your mind, the, the true nature of this realm, then you can believe anything. You can believe that, you know, boogeymen are flying through the air and they're going to get you when you're walking through the woods by yourself. So that's why I talk about it because if you look in the flat earth community, um, everybody is awake and aware. We just had a conference in uh, Las Vegas. I got a minute, Dave. I'm just picking up my globe. This is my yeah. teapot of urine that I drink <laughs> throughout the show. It's not really urine, it's tea. But I am indeed English, so I do like a, a cup of tea whilst I'm listening. <laughs> and, and another thing that, and I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm just going to say almost every, and I'm going to say almost, like the when, when there's a firing squad, one guy doesn't have a bullet, so he can think that it wasn't him. But almost every leader in the health freedom movement is a flat earther. Okay? <laughs> almost almost every single one of them. They are. Yeah, they all are. And, and, and a lot of them are hiding. And, and I don't blame them because they don't want to, they want to, they're trying to get important information out there. I get it. Because they're but, ballless, gutless cowards. No, no, no. Don't talking. say that. They're, com they're coming out very soon. Anymore. Let's but, not but, argue. They're only just fell in love. No, yeah, I'm so, going to say it. Wait, hold on. Hold on, Kate. So what, what I'm saying is for those of you that are doubting, I'm offering three Bitcoins. That's over a hundred grand right now for one globe proof. I used to be you. I used to laugh at flat earthers, say there's a million proofs of the globe. There are none. And there's a million proofs of flat. There's no proofs of flat earth is what they say. There are too many, but these are just the flat earthers here in America. Oh, you're in the UK. Are you in the UK? We are. Okay. Well, look at all. Are. These are, these are the flat earthers that are on my app in the UK that are networking together, uh, sharing wow. information. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So when it, when people say a oh, flat earth yeah, is dying. There's as many flat earthers as you, Les, cameras. Ultra low, em ultra low emission zone cameras that catch us and find us and, you know, yeah. as we as we drive around the globe. <laughs> they, they, there's no driving around the globe or airplanes don't fly exactly. around. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to believe that, that we're – um, that we're flying like this. Let me see if I get this up. That that an airplane is doing this is. Hey, Dave, I was cabin crew ten years. Yeah, did, did you did you years. do this? Did you on do this? Seven four sevens. No, on seven four sevens. And let me tell you, I once went on to um, Concord before it was it was grounded, but I was on the ground on it. And they say to you, you know, oh, you can see the curvature of the Earth. <laughs> no, you can't. It's no, you the, can't. Just the port. It's the it's the way they're made. They're like fishbowl ones. Well, you're looking at a curved window, but also the limit of our vision is the same distance in all directions. And that creates a flat circle. And that's just how we see. And then your programming tells you that you're on a spinning ball flying in figure eights like this. And this is insanity. If you think about it right here, this is the equator. That's that ground is moving at a thousand miles per hour. But up here, it's only moving at like 300 miles an hour because it's making a smaller turn. So how does that plane accelerate and decelerate, changing all of these latitudes? When you think about it, which you never have before if you believe you live on a globe, it makes no sense. It makes no sense because it makes no sense, period. Right? And people are like, well, I can't figure it out. I'm not qualified. That's you because that's you are qualified. Do what? you think that? Because I, I, I spoke to a lawyer today, one of my patients. Yeah. And she said, what are you doing tonight? I went, oh, I've got Flat Earth Dave coming on. No she went, oh, you, she said, you are great talking topics at our dinner parties. But apparently they all talk about me because I'm such a dissident. And she said, this one's going to be great now that you're now down the flat, flat Earth rabbit hole. I went, come on down it. And she went, no, it's just too much for me. Do you think it's because people can't accept actually that there's something bigger than, than themselves, the creator? They just can't accept it? This is all I think, I think that it, that the that the controllers of this world did a fantastic job brainwashing people, kids, before they can even talk, and all through school. So your whole foundation is built on the globe. So to to find out that that's not true, you have to rip out your entire foundation, and that's emotionally too difficult for many people. So so they'll just cling onto the globe because. Every, no, the globe is dinosaurs and Star Wars and, and life from other planets and all of this insanity. But when you actually look at it, one thing all flat earthers have in common is we look back and go, how the hell did we ever believe in the globe? How did, how, I, I don't understand how I fell for it. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. And another thing about flat earthers, we know more about the globe than the people that defend the globe. Because if you knew a tenth of what we knew, no, 
about your model, you would be flat earthers, period. Because the, your, your model is the most ridiculous, uh, dumbest thing ever. Dumbest. So, so why, why, Dave, will they not let us go to, I want to go to Antarctica where you're not allowed. Why can't I go there? Because, well, the people will say, well, you can. You can take a very expensive trip, and they'll, they'll take you right here to this little peninsula right off yeah. of Santiago. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's an island there they take you to called Rothschild Island. If they don't take you there, they'll take you to Deception Island. And uh, they won't let you get anywhere near the shoreline. Antarctica is everything. They consider Antarctica everything from 60 degrees south and farther south. So there's a treaty says no independent exploration can, can go there. You know, people go, well, you know, only uh, if you want to do scientific, uh, you know, you can go explore. Nobody is allowed to independently explore Antarctica. And people say, well, planes have flown over and a plane will come over here. It'll skim along here, maybe going 10, 20, 100 miles inland. And then it comes out. And they say they crossed Antarctica. No, they didn't. They just went across the edge of our world pond. Yeah, I, and you know, I don't. The, I, I'm trying to read the comments here. I, some of them are just rude, but anyway, um, well, not rude as in as in one's been talking about me when I worked for the uh, when I worked for British Airways. Never happened. Never happened. I was never interested in pilots. Their social class is too low because all they are is the same as bus drivers. Anyway, I'm joking. Um, you know, it, it's quite interesting because, like you say, once you see it, you you can't unsee it, and it becomes hysterical. And when yeah. it just becomes ridiculous, you know, everything about the tides. One of the things I've done, a, I, I go for a lot of walks on Ashdown Forest. I go and it's dark. I, I don't, people say, aren't you scared? I go, of who? There's only me up there. But anyway, um, one thing when you look at the moon, that's really weird. The more you look at it, it's almost transparent. I think it is kind of transparent. If you, uh, if you actually look at the moon, uh, you'll notice that at nighttime, the craters are darker in the back. You know, the, the craters are black. And when there's a blue sky, the craters are blue. Okay. So here, like, for example, look at all these pictures of the moon. Look at the craters, the, the, the dark areas. That's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down, what those dark areas are. They reflect, they show the color of the sky. And when there's a, an eclipse, a solar eclipse, there is no moon in the sky. Nobody has ever seen the moon. And there's no reason you shouldn't see the moon during an eclipse. Well, wait, wait a minute. Something eclipses the sun. And yeah, something does. Uh, I have tons of uh, information on what that might be. Uh, but it's a longer story than uh, we have time for. So what do you think? Don't worry, we'll be having you back to cover that. Okay. I'm going to squeeze every last drop of flat earth out of Dave. No, every that's last a, drop. That's a lot. There. That's a lot. I know. I've been flat earthing all day. I've listened to you. I've watched you. I've looked at things and I'm like, I need to get Dave on the forest. He needs to come over here. So what is the moon? What do you think it is? Great question. You know, the only thing you can honestly say about any of the lights in the sky, sun, moon, and stars, and anything else, is that they're lights. We don't know what they are. We don't know how far they are. We don't know how big they are. We don't know even know what shape they are. People say, well, well the moon is a sphere. I actually think the moon might be a sphere, but you can't say the the shape of something unless you absolutely, uh, when then, unless you can measure it and touch it. For example, um, where is my thing? Here it is. So here is, uh, I got four moons here. And until this hand touches it, you don't know how big it is. It could be the size of a yoga ball. This one is a half. Is this one a sphere? Kate, what do you think? No. That one? It's not a sphere. It's flat. Wait a minute. That looks like a sphere. How possibly could it be flat? How about this one? Is this a sphere? It's flat. It's a coaster. It's not. This one's a bowl. Okay. Oh, this next one. Yeah, the next one, that's a sphere. But what I'm saying is, unless you can touch it, unless you know the distance, unless you know the size. You oh, that's really, the bowl. Yeah. You really can't say anything about it. So the, the optics of, uh, of the sky are, are no way to prove the shape of the earth. For example, which one of these tables is wider than the other from left to right? well it look it looks like that it looks one like that proud. one right yeah, yeah i was because i'm a woman you see i was actually turning the other one around in my head well in reality they're both the exact same dimension so if i put a little piece of paper on here showing you that's the size of that table and then i put it there it's the exact same size but even though i showed you this you can't break the illusion 
No. Okay. So the way we see is uh, is kind of uh, it's kind of amazing. And and when you look at uh, when you look at a light in the sky, well, it looks like a sphere. Well, if this was the is this the sun or the moon, and is it rising or setting? Can you tell? The astronomy book says it's the moon and it's setting. Can you tell? No. Well, you, people believe what they're told, but when we look, this is actually a train, and it's got it doesn't have a round light on it. It has a whole bunch of different shaped lights. But this is how we see everything goes to that vanishing point and creates a sphere. Yeah, so that's I, I, that's I, I remember the vanishing points from my yeah. art lessons. Yeah, it's interesting because in scripture we're taught we're taught about um, you know that the Lord moved across the water and the Lord and the Holy Spirit were one, and that movement is 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 frequency electromagnetic frequency, which is what it's 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 physics. The language of the Lord is maths. So it's energy. And then as I read, I think it's Psalm, it's I think it's Psalm 108. Come on, you harp and Lyra. But we know that when when light hits hydrogen, the hydrogen atom, the red goes into the nucleus, the violet goes into the electrons, and it supercharges it. And what are we? We're mostly water, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. Do you think this is a matrix? And that's what's I That's think we live and out of the matrix that light, right. that energy, you know, people say, well, I think it's a simulation. I think you're right. I think we are in a physical simulation. We're in this toroidal field and there's this dielectric plane and that's where we exist. We're part of this electrical system. We're all part, every single thing from the trees to us, to rocks, to everything was alive, is alive in a sense. And it's all part of this matrix. So is it a simulation? I like the word. I like it. So, but we're here, we're having this physical experience where our consciousness comes from. We can talk about that all day and night, but we can prove in this reality that we live in that there is no curvature. If there's no curvature, there's no sphere, okay? We can see that large bodies of water at rest always lie flat and we can see too far. On a flat earth, yeah, you can, your horizon, your horizontal eye zone is a variable distance depending on the atmosphere but on a ball there's a physical limit to how far you can see and that and we know what that is they want you to say well you're so small you're like an amoeba on a basketball and he thinks it's flat but the truth but then they want you to believe that boats go over the horizon using their math a six foot tall person shouldn't be able to see the surface of the water beyond three miles because there's a six foot drop therefore it should be behind a physical horizon and if they sit down it's even closer but we can look out and we can see things on the water way way out there way out there yeah yeah I, I saw a video you were talking about that and i um i was practicing that and and it's it's so true so so if we're on which listen i'm i'm with you i don't care and you see because i've got um invisible large testes but not the bank account to match um I, i'm quite happy to say you couldn't convince me ever that it's a spinning globe i've been to the to the science museum in london it's quite hysterical and i've been to the natural history museum with all the plastic dinosaurs but um all of yeah. it so is there a so in in physics when they talk about a firmament they talk about electrical charges pushing away from each other don't they something like that but uh, so what is the firmament do you think there's a firmament over this earth as well well, that's another thing. I can't go up there and touch it, but you know, if you look at the the Go Fast rocket, do you remember? You know what that one is? Yeah, yeah. So the the Go well, Fast yeah, rocket. Talk about it because some of the people listening might not know. Um, the Go Fast rocket. Well, you know, when when you watch a NASA launch or a uh, or a uh, uh, SpaceX launch, the rockets cup, they curve over. Two seconds later, you're watching animation, and it crashes into the ocean. But Go Fast was an independent rocket, an amateur rocket um, sponsored by Red Bull. And they gave us an uninterrupted view, um, unlike NASA. You watch any launch, there's five or six or seven cuts before it clears the tower. Edit, 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 just to keep you confused because it's a movie. But this thing went up, and all of a sudden it went kerplunk, and it went into something. It went into a thicker medium. And uh, we had a NASA whistleblower that was saying you know, it turns into plasma, then it turns into liquid, then it's a, then it's a solid. And they're not even allowed, I don't know what that means, to go up there and investigate but here's something interesting that's the moon this thing saw the moon okay what can we do with that well we know that that rocket took off in uh, i think it was arizona and it was around 11 o'clock in the morning sun's over here 
right? So 11 o'clock. And the moon was over Australia at that time. So if this is the Earth, that rocket was a millimeter above the Earth, and the moon was below the Earth. How did they see it? How did they see the moon? How did that rocket see the moon? That there alone is done, finished. You could say, well, that wasn't the moon. Well, it was the moon. Go look at it. Zoom in. It's the moon. Okay. And well, it, the moon wasn't there. Well, yes, it was there. Time and date tells us where the moon was. And the rocket, you know, was launched at a specific time. We can see where there should be curvature and there is no curvature. No curvature. So, so may I ask you then, Dave, because I, I have listened to, to like I yeah. say, a lot. Yeah, I've been down to South America. I when I when I worked for the airline, I was down in Buenos Aires. All Out. of the all of the all of the telescopes are down there, aren't they? That's, That's interesting. All of the big telescopes, all owned by the Vatican, by the way, are all looking out south, out south, not down south. They're all looking south, which is every direction away from the center of the Earth. Okay, from the center, which is our North Pole. And uh, what are they looking for? Well, I don't know. They're looking for, you know, what's going on out there. I think that, you know, everything that we see is happening here. If you think about this, think about this, Kate. And th this is easy to, easy to think about, but your brain is not used to this if you went through the indoctrination system. They tell us that there's 100 billion stars in our galaxy, okay? 100, 100 billion stars, right? Let me, uh, let me show you this. 100 billion stars in our galaxy. And they and that eighty percent of them, I think, I think they said eighty percent are binary. You know what that means? Binary right. stars means that they that there's two stars that are orbiting each other. So the stars are doing this binary figure eight. Okay, so you have out of hundred billion stars, eighty percent of them are doing their own little pattern. Okay, their own little figure eight thing. And the galaxy is spinning. We're traveling four point four billion miles a year. This is our solar system. This is what they tell us it's doing. Okay, but never in history has anyone looked up and go, oh, that star that used to be on the right side of that star is now on the left side. Never once has there been any parallax. Never once has anything changed position. It's no, I'm out here at night and it's the plow. It's yeah. the, uh, it's the uh, Orion. Nothing changes. No, nothing, nothing ever changes. And they say that the, the shaft on the pyramid, Great Pyramid of Giza points to Polaris. They go, whoa, when it was built, it pointed towards a different North Star, Thuban. And in 2,000 years, it's going to point somewhere else. But we just happen to live in the time where that star is lined up with the pyramid. We have here in America, or we had, it was the Georgia Guidestones. I mean, you probably know about that, right? Yeah, we all know about those. Didn't they get yeah. blown up? <laughs> yeah. I, I, not, I don't believe. But yeah, anyway. well, 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 here's the thing. The Georgia guy, you know, they say that, Everything's so far away that even though we're moving 4.4 billion, with a B, miles a year, there's no parallax because things are just so far away. Well, if you actually sort that out mathematically, it's absolutely stupid. And um, the Georgia Guidestones had that, you could look through and there was Polaris. You look through that little hole, there's Polaris. Well, if, uh, if their whole thing about precession is true, every 72 years, 72, 72, um, it, the, the earth wobbles one degree. Okay. It doesn't sound like a lot, but the Georgia Guidestones were up for over 40 years. That's a half a degree. A half a degree is a moon and a half width, I believe, right? A moon and a half, even if it was a half a moon, Polaris wouldn't be there, but it was still there. So we started talking about it on lots of podcasts and then ba-boom. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, right. And then three, three hours later, they had bulldozers there getting rid of all the evidence and knock down the whole thing. So the absolute proof, they had to take it down. They had to take it down. That should make you wonder. The fact that they're hiding all of your, you know, oh, let me look into flat earth. You Google flat earth, good luck. You're going to just get more indoctrinated with nonsense. Yeah. And so, so Dave, who, you know, we talk about, in fact, I'm going to put this to you, you know, who's hiding it, but in scripture, uh, the King James Bible, I've stopped reading it once I found out he was a Freemason. Mm -hmm. And I, I switched on to a different one. They have hid so much from us. They don't want us to know our, our energy, our, our, our ability. They don't want us to know anything. But they want us to believe that we came from some theory, Darwin's theory of evolution, all those same names all go back to the same lineage, uh, Darwin, Huxley, all of them. But anyway, they want us to believe that. So who, who, is it the same people? Who wants us to believe that we're on a spinning globe, hurtling through space, 
uh, gravity, uh, which all of it's ridiculous. Uh, but they want us to believe that. Who is it? It's the it's all of the groups that we know, the Bilderberg Group, the Club of Rome, the United Nations. These are all the royal families, these unelected groups, the World Economic Forum. These are the people that are dictating over us, right? Yeah. They they Let me just read this. Divine law is the law of God. That is the top, okay? It is. Below that is common law, the law of the land, and then statute admiral, admiral maritime law is the law of, uh, is man's law, right? In order to convince man to give up his divine rights and their common rights, you have to convince them that they're not divinely created in a divine world. And that's the whole idea. They're hiding creation. I think it's Romans 1 that says um, something like, um, when you can get to know God by, uh, you know, the, you get to know the non, the, is it the non-physical or the spiritual part or the invisible part of God through seeing his creation? So if they hide his greatest creation or one of his greatest creations, then you're lost. You can be uh, an atheist if you want. There's plenty of, uh, you know, God-believing globe earthers, but there are zero flat earthers that don't know for a fact there's a creator. So that's what they want. They, they're, they're hiding creation because if you're living on a spinning ball, a speck of dust fly, flying through an infinite universe, it's going to get taken out by a supernova or an asteroid and, uh, and all of this other nonsense. If you b follow all of that, you're living in fear. You're living in lack. You're, you're, uh, you're afraid we're going to run out of food. We're going to run out of water that you need to stick stuff into your arm. Oh, to, yeah, you're, you know, but there's not enough oil, even though it's plentiful. Yeah. And and what te well, tell us about you know what you know one of the things that I I was shown a a map a long time ago, and it was it was drawn up by different ex explorers who'd explored at different times, and they showed the four holes where the water from the oceans drained into. Yeah, do I have that one? This is an old this is an old map. It doesn't. I think it might have it. I think and it, it was incredible. Yeah, well, there, there used to be land at the North Pole. Now there's nothing there, you know. But and there, there's two places that we're not allowed to explore physically or virtually, and that's the North Pole and the and Antarctica. You're not allowed to go there physically or um, virtually. So well, when Santa I Santa Claus is on there, but so, I'm yeah. sorry, <laughs> I just had to say that. I know it was really stupid, but it's true. But it, but it is. You should have seen. You know, people are saying to me. On all platforms, you're gonna ruin your credibility. I couldn't give a right. I used sense. to think that. I used to I, think I, that. Too. I don't care. If yep. people don't know by now that having stood in Trafalgar Square with a microphone and forty thousand people using my own son against me, taking my license off me and everything else, and I still didn't care, and I still continued, trust me, telling you that I don't believe the spinning globe thing. I don't care what you think. Um, but it, it's it's interesting when I was showed this about the about the water. The, ocean, the oceans, as above, so below, that it's water above. The same as with the oil. You know, we've got to believe that dinosaurs died and all the foliage, and it takes years and years and years to make oil and coal. And, and I, I'm from a mining town. I was brought up, everybody in my school, a few smart people went to uni, some got apprenticeships, most went down the mines. And then they closed it or stopped it or said, oh, there's no more coal. There was loads of coal masses and masses and they all said this but there's loads of coal so it's all quite interesting but you know so so your map what what do you think what do i what think do you, yeah what, where do you think they got the globe from because you know people can download uh, google earth on their phone and they can zoom right out into space and then zoom right back down to their house and i find that who did that that's Who all that's all from drones and airplanes and balloons taking pictures and mapping out the world. It wasn't until um I forget when not that long ago Google Earth used to be flat and then they wrapped it around a sphere. It, it, when it first came out, it was showing everything flat and then they then they changed it. And and what what I think happened is they took the the uh the flat map of the world and wrapped it around a sphere. Now the Globers will say, oh, the, the, the flat map, the Gleason's map, which is the best map that we have right now, is, uh, is, is, the, uh, is a uh, projection of the globe. The opposite is true. Because the, the, I mean, if you look at flight routes, if you look at navigation, 
Uh, things take longer in the South to go from one point to another. GPS says you went 500 miles and it takes you, uh, you know, it takes you, I don't know, let's just say one day, 500 miles, whatever. And uh, in the North, you can go that same 500 miles in a half a day. Okay, well, wait a minute. What's going on there? Why, why is that the case? And that's because GPS is lying. GPS is, is, uh, is run by NASA. This is what I think they did. Imagine, Kate, if, uh, if we didn't have any, anything but boats and no radio communications, no internet, no nothing, and they took the map here. So we just have the United States, some of Canada, Mexico, part of South America, and they cut it out and they wrapped it around a sphere and they told everybody in America, this is where you live and you're not allowed to explore this white area because we have to protect the penguins and the ice, okay? This is all that there is. And if you got in a boat and went off the coast, a um, couple hundred miles out, they'd stop you and say, no, 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 you can't go out here. This is um, you know, the treaty. You're not allowed because that would put you out here, right? Because it's wrapped around a sphere. And I think that's what they did with, uh, with our entire world, with uh, what we know. This is a map. This is speculation, right, that there's a whole bunch of ponds. And we live at the center of this one. And again, you don't need to look at this stuff to prove that the Earth is flat. There's plenty of proof. But what if they cut this out, wrapped it around a sphere, and said, this is where you live. This is all that there is, and you're not allowed to go anywhere else, okay? Interesting. Again, we don't need this. Well, what would this do? This is a prison for your mind. As you said, your thoughts are very powerful. Well, if your thoughts are stuck in this ball, how are you going to have these expansive thoughts of, you know, uh, there, there's um, abundance everywhere. We're not overpopulated. We're not running out of food. We're not running out of fuel. We're not running out of anything except common sense but but certainly um i have a vast array of books here that's just a bit of them and natural healing and the one thing you know i started off with all the physical but i tell you the more i the years have rocked on 12 years metaphysical physiology i ask every patient every single patient and you know people People see it constantly, see it constantly. So if we take cancer, they see these charities everywhere, race for life. Every year, once a year, you've got to don a pink wig, take cakes, and you've got to run for your loved one that's died. This is what they do in this country. It's mental. And then you have, you know, uh, coffee mornings for cancer. Then you watch adverts on it. Everything, cancer, cancer, cancer. Cancer's one in two. Everyone's thinking about it all the time. Everyone's scared of it. So are we collectively creating it? A hundred percent. There's, yeah. there's, there's, I don't watch, tel I don't watch TV and, and occasionally if I'm at someone's house or something and they, and which rarely happens, um, they have TV on the commercials are all drug commercials. It's insane. And oh, you need this, you need that, you need Viagra, you need, you know, and, and that is literally creating the problem. They're, they're, they're programming you with yeah. these drugs and and i think the list of side effects they they list them because when you hear them your your body is going to just live in fear and start oh, getting all of these effects I have to, yeah, i'm going to tell you something for all the listeners you've got to hear this i've had surgery three weeks after diagnosis then signed myself out on day two realized it was wrong and then went down the whole natural route but the first time i went to see the oncologist on the train i got told i had to go i should go it was private i should go so i went on the train i was already decided i wasn't doing it on the way in on the train, my eyes started to burn, my throat, my eyes started to stream, my nose did. I get to the clinic in London, big top posh clinic. Sorry, folks, I'm a nurse, I'm graphic. I had to run to the bathroom, completely entered my entire colon, felt so sick. When I went in to see him, I said, I'm really sorry, I've not been very well, I was shaking. And he said, what are your symptoms? I told him, he went, that's really weird. They're all the symptoms of the drugs that I would put you on. The side effects nice so, yeah. yeah and you know what i went to see him the next time same thing happened so you see absolutely so what you're seeing now you know this war that war all these images and everything else you can't do anything about it where you where you're living right. but are you creating it that's what i don't have a tv dave I'm yeah we're 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 creating our reality the biggest conspiracy of all is that your thoughts are create are are your thought, the universe, this world, this realm is conspiring to deliver you all of your thoughts. So if you're watching these drug commercials, if you're watching these horror films, if you're watching the news with all this nonsense, all of that is coming to you. You're pulling that in. You're energizing it. Flat earthers, true earthers, level earthers, we've unplugged from that. 
We're no longer afraid. When I hear the news, you know, if I if I'm listening to the news just for a little bit, and I rarely ever do it, but uh, though someone's making a speech and they're like, "Oh, this and that," and, and it's going to cause a nuclear war. Like I'm listening to Mike Adams. Okay. Yeah. Mike Adams, he's cool. a, and then he's talking about nuclear war. I'm like, "You're an idiot." There's no nuclear war. There's no nuclear exactly. bomb. This yeah. is what my friend told me. Who's the the guy but, that works for government? There's no such thing. And for those of you triggered right now, I know what you're saying. What about Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Was that fake? Yes, it was. It was a big TNT bomb. There's actually video of soldiers stacking TNT at ground zero before the, the, before the explosion. And by the way, a big explosion, even a small explosion, makes the same mushroom cloud that they tell you is a uh, you know, nuclear bomb. And if you go back and watch the, you know, the nuclear bomb pictures, the videos that they showed us in grade school, they're 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 models. They're 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 miniature models. It's the dumbest crap ever, right? So again, when you educate yourself on this, and so I'll I'll watch that, and everyone's like, everyone, when you hear nuclear bomb, if you believe nuclear bombs are real, that that Putin's going to start a nuclear war, every cell in your body is at dis ease for, mm -hmm. and and you're going to sleep and live, and that's all going to be in there, and all of that's causing cancer and everything else. It's causing. Oh. Causing you to age, it's it's ripping your telomeres apart. It's doing everything. So I, I, I have talked about telomeres on this yeah. on all my shows. The yeah. telomeres on the end of your DNA, folks. Every time a cell divides, a little bit snaps off. That's your indication of aging, right there. I don't then, I don't identify with that, Kate. So I'm not I'm not buying into that's that. Okay, bullshit. but what I was going to say was um, one of the studies that I read, a a study from the '60s, just showed this would you might identify with this, but. It said that the thing that affected the telomeres more than anything out there, physical, environmental, was your emotions. Yes. How you feel about 100%. this. 100%. Uh, there we go. We agree. So that's what uh, that's what this was saying. So well, if you're constantly afraid and living in fear yeah. and, and you know, no, not loving your neighbor and everything else, it's going to affect you. Back, you know, biblically, people live for hundreds of years, and and yeah. there's so many stories. So, um, I with all the wokeness that's going on, and you know, I, I identify he, she, him, her, all of this stuff. I decided to make a little joke, and I said I don't identify with chronological age, so therefore I'm not going to mention my age because I don't identify with it. And it was a joke, oh, but in reality, I feel better and better because when you say. Oh, I'm 30. Well, these things happen when you're 30. I'm 40. I'm 50. I'm 60. I'm 60. When you say you're 80, all, you are programmed. Oh, 80. This is going to break down. I'm going to get Alzheimer's. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. This is what happens. So I identify with 30. Okay. Yeah. And next year, I identify yeah. with probably 29. Yeah. yeah. You see, this is why people say to me, I should get my hair cut. And I go, why? It's like, it's like, I'm going to say it, folks. You know, people go, oh, we don't do that anymore. It's, we're at that age. I know 80 year olds it, it, are still it, having it, sex. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm in better shape than many 20 year olds. And that's not saying much because everyone here in America is just fat and lazy and stupid. And, and <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't identify with the nonsense. You know, I do the best. I don't, I'm not the best eater. I, I eat pretty well, but then, you know, I'll, I'll have chicken wings and I'll do everything. You know, I'll eat, I'll eat what I eat, but I, uh, I eat with intention. I try to eat good food all the time. I try. Well, I don't sleep. <laughs> Very little sleep. Flat Earthers don't sleep because we're always researching. But you know, and I drink good water and I drink hydrogen water. I, I, that's uh, that stuff is amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and and you just do the best that you can with what you have and where you are. But the more you know, the better the better it is. Yeah, I I would agree with all of that. And I I do pretty much eat really healthy, but um, I choose not to have a TV. Uh, even though now I got a letter today that. It had two envelope holes in it. One was for my address, and the other one was so that the postman could read that they've now opened an investigation and into my address because I've not got a license. And now, now I'm the occupier. They've stopped addressing it, sorry, to my name. Because I told them I don't need a TV license. I'm not paying it. I don't have a telly. Now they're writing to the occupier saying that they want into my house for me to prove that I don't have a TV or watch a phone or anything. The problem is, as soon as you let them in, they go, oh, you've got a laptop, and they send you to court. You have to try and convince the court. I don't watch any telly. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'll be handling that, folks. Don't worry. But I choose um, not to watch any of it anymore because I, I the more I go on, the more I learn is it, it does. It makes you old. It makes you fretful. Even in the last three years, I've changed masses. I just think 
I'm not going, I'm not going down that side anymore of, of, you know, we know what the government are doing. We know who they are. They're liars. But uh, I'm going down the other route. I'm creating what I want here. That's Which, right. And, and we don't need to take down the old system, the old NASA uh, lying government system. You know, government, government is below us. God, man, government. I think government should be down even farther, but below us. And, you know, government's trying to get above God. So flat earth is the thing that unplugs you from the system. I used to wake people up to, you know, the big deceptions here in New York, you know, the Boston Marathon, uh, the school in Connecticut, oh, okay. and, and, all stuff, and the people go right back to sleep. You wake someone up to flat earth, all of a sudden they can see everything. And then they, they realize, you know, everyone changes. Nobody is the same once they see flat earth. So, so Dave, give us, give us, give us your, give us, um, I don't know, maybe your top three statements that are going to really make people think your well, best here's, ones. Here's, here's one. This is just, this is a very simple one because using their math, the Pythagorean theorem, the curvature formula that gives the globe the benefit of the doubt. There's three formulas and one of them, which is the eight inches per mile squared based off the Pythagorean theorem, which is a provable, provable thing. Um, is gives the least, least amount of curvature. So here we have a canal. It's eight miles. And this guy, when it was frozen, he went out on the, he went out on the canal. Where's it going? And he put his camera just inches above the ice. And he had lasers. This one was eight miles, seven miles, six miles, and five miles. Doing the math, their math, and I rounded down, way down. This one should be 30 feet below a physical horizon. 22 feet, 15 feet, and nine feet but they're all there, right there, lined up. No curvature, no refraction, no viewer height. And, when, and I took in the cameras, you know, six inches off the ground. The, 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 um, the lights were uh, a foot off the ground. But if you, if you look, they're all there, okay? Finished. There is no curvature. There's no curvature here. There's no curvature anywhere. So there's longer observations than this with infrared. You got Jay Tolan Media out there with uh, his infrared stuff. He could see like a thousand miles, and mm -hmm. you know the curvature is, is not there. You know the SR seventy one, which is the U.S. spy uh, plane. It goes like Mach three point two or something, and the pilots at at that speed, at that speed, they should be dropping eighty stories. 80 stories, that's you know, 800 feet every, is it every second? Every second, 800 feet a second. You can't, because of the curvature. It's ridiculous. It's the dumbest thing ever. And um, you know, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. Any more? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's Wait, so many. So we see too far, up. yeah. Go I'm gonna, uh, What's this compass? Compass? Isn't there also an entrance to the inner Earth? Someone's asking. Well, I don't believe. Uh, I believe that there is something below us because the deepest hole ever dug is just eight miles, and uh, it's just under eight miles. And so they've never been able to get below that. Maybe that's another firmament, and there's a whole other world below us, and there's other worlds above us. I don't know. I live here. I don't need to yeah, speculate yeah, yeah. what's up there and and what what's down there. But another another thing that it, that is good is amazing is uh since you were a flight attendant if i go here on my app and i type in uh, southern southern flight routes um here is uh here's here's uh, flights from from uh johannesburg over to australia they go up to dubai up to hong kong and to malaysia why do they go all the way up there and the answer is because on a flat earth those are the same flight routes those make sense these make no sense and if we look at, uh, just look at a couple other ones. Yeah, that's uh, kind of true. And now they show you, you know, when you're flying, yeah. they, show you the, the, they show you the little airplane and where you're going. Well, and they're lying. Half the time, the airplane's not where they say. Uh, th this is a flight from Auckland, Cape Town. And it, it, it should just fly right here over Antarctica, over the corner edge of it, or just around it. Plenty of places to stop out there if they had an emergency. But instead, they fly all the way up to Dubai. That makes no sense, but on a flat earth, it makes perfect sense. Absolutely perfect sense. And there's been so many emergency landings. This is uh, the World Cup was in Doha. They went to Rome for fuel and then to Buenos Aires. Wait, why didn't they just fly to Buenos Aires, right? That actually looks shorter than Rome. But if you look at it on a flat earth map, Doha, Rome, 
Buenos Aires happens to be a flat earth. Has to, happens to work perfectly. Yeah, right earth. there. That's the best one that's going to convince anybody. That's why well, because there's, <laughs> yeah, there's that, soccer that, players that, on it. <laughs> that's me and my golly bird hairdo on it. But yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's, I yeah. don't know. Okay, I, I, this I, one you'll like. This one you'll really like. So there's a family flying from Hong Kong. They're going to the UK, a 12, a 12 hour flight. And four hours into the flight, right about here, the mother traveling with the husband, small children, dies. Dies suddenly. How'd that happen? I don't know. Weird. Or it just happened. Okay. Just happened. Yeah. Just died yeah. suddenly. So what does the pilot do? I've got to land. Well, there's probably 50 different airports that he could have landed on in this area, but he didn't. He flew for eight hours. Could you imagine sitting next to your dead mother for eight hours? Yeah, they did it. We had somebody die. Yeah, uh, on the Maybe way to Singapore, the... and we left her in the chair till we got all the way down to Australia because so, we didn't see her anywhere. Well, we just covered her with a he, blanket. Here's the flight on a flat Earth. Four hours into the flight, they're over Russia. Okay, so if they if they landed in Russia, first thing is Russia would probably be very helpful, and and that could spark peace. But the other question is, why are they over Russia? And then people like me and other you know, researchers will go, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. So they never admitted it. They never admitted the flight path. They just went and they stopped in Frankfurt. Why didn't they just finish the last hour or two and get the, get the people to their final destination? But instead they stopped in Frankfurt and dropped off the dead the mother. You know, a, a, a ridiculous. But on a flat earth, it makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. So what about when people are sitting on the aircraft and the pilot comes on and he goes, Oh, you're just looking out. I mean, a lot of the places you look out, and you're just like, that's a bit barren. Um, yeah, every, everything's barren. You fly across America, there's nobody. There's, it's empty. Yeah, the whole thing is empty, but we're overpopulated. Very populated. I, was in a church, you. I was in a church a couple of weeks ago, and the woman that was about to take the funeral interment of the ashes was telling me there was too many people on the earth. I said, who shall yeah. we kill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that every family in the world could have an acre in Australia and half of Australia would be empty. Okay. And the rest of the world would be empty. I think you can put everybody in your, I have a, I have a question, a question about, uh, I want to talk about censorship for a second. And, uh, but I have a question. So this is a balloon at 120,000 feet. And this is, you can tell there's a local sun It's lighting up this local area. Uh, you know, what is the sun? I don't know. It's not 93 million miles away. I can tell you that. But I've heard uh, several people say that they used to fly to Concord and there's times where the stewardess would come and say, close your window shades because we're going to be passing the sun. My friend worked on Concord. I'm going to ask him. Will you ask, will you ask that? I will. We're going to be, we're going to be passing the sun. It's interesting, right? So here's the thing. On YouTube, this is and Google, YouTube, Google. And we know that Google lies to us. You know, you can search for anything. Like if you search for, you know, stuff that you talk about with the vaccines, well, that's not even going to, that's just going to be removed. But you can search I don't for. Talk about it anymore. I can't you, be bothered. Yeah, yeah. But you can search for anything. You're searching for Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, you know, cures for cancer, whatever. Uh, and there's something you watched three years ago, six months ago, two days ago, two hours ago. It's in your YouTube history. It's there. You just search for it and bam, they'll say, oh, you watched, here's the video, all the videos that you've ever, ever watched. They're all there. But if you go and go onto my channel, D-I-T-R-H, stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, or go to any other legitimate real channel, Jaronism, Globebusters, um, you know, Taboo Conspiracy, and watch a whole bunch of videos that all have Flat Earth in their title, Flat Earth in their tags, they'll be right there in your history, right? In your chronological history. But if you search your history for Flat Earth, they all disappear, and the troll, the, 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 the propaganda videos will take their place. Yeah, Why I, I, is that I the only that. topic that does that? I saw that. I yeah. saw that. I kept, I had to physically keep putting your name back in. Yep. Because it wouldn't come up. It had all my rubbish 70s music. Yep. All my, my yep. I shouldn't say it, but the wonderful, the wonderful Wayne, Wayne Dyer. That's censorship. Here. But I had to keep putting yours back in. Yeah, that, and if you just Google my name, you're going to find all this crap videos, and um, you won't find – actually, sometimes the, the algorithm has been changing. Sometimes they will show you my channel, Dave, Flat Earth Dave Interviews 2. That's where my latest interviews are. This interview won't be there. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so but I'll, I'll, I'll share it on, my, on the Flat Earth Podcast Facebook page. I'll probably get a strike for it, but I'll do it anyway. I don't care. Okay? So 
that's the the censorship should tell you right there. And and my the biggest critics say Dave is just in this to make money and sell his app. That is not true. I walked away from a lot of money, a, a great firm that I started, and I'm in this to wake up the world, just like you are. You're not in this for the fame or for the money. You're in this because it's the right thing I, to I do. This is your calling. You I lost, lost everything. I understand. Yeah, I but, had to cash my pension to keep paying my mortgage. I lost my business. So but here's I, the, I, I understand. I understand. And this is this is my calling. And luckily, I was able to create this app called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. You can find it at flatearthdave.com. And it's bringing people together. It's letting people find uh, whatever they want. If you, it, it, has, it now has the video search. If I go in here and say, you know what? I saw oh, – actually, I have a test version on here. If you hit the little search button and you say, you know, there was a video on Antarctica about sky ice. Just type in sky ice. Bam, all the videos on sky ice will come up. So – it's a great source of information. Why do I promote my app? One, because it's the best way to get information. Why do I send people to my website? You don't even have to buy my app. Just go to my website and there's tons of videos, not just mine, all the good videos are there. And there's, I have a thing called the crash course. Scroll down, click it, and those are videos that YouTube are hiding from you. Watch those videos. It's scientifically impossible to watch three of them and remain a globe earther. But the problem is the diehard globe earthers are like, I'm not watching anything. I know the earth is a globe, but I can't tell you why. Yeah, because that's I, what they said tonight. They said, yeah. oh, it, it was the one guy. Uh, it was, uh, you. It, this is utter bollocks. That was his, that was his, his response. That's their best globe proof. So yeah. what will happen in, in the chat here, I have a team of trolls. I have a team of trolls that follow me everywhere. So they're going to show up in your chat and they're going to comment on everyone's comments, but they will never, ever offer a globe proof. They'll just attack flat earth, right? Stop attacking flat earth, right? You stop straw manning. You have to straw man to glurf, I say. Glurf is being a globe earther, okay? You have to straw man because that's all they do is they straw man us. They're like, oh, the flat earth society got together in Vegas. Nope, we're not the flat earth society. Flat earth society is government controlled disinformation to make you laugh at flat earth. And they they straw man us with the disc floating in space. We're not a disc floating in space. They they'll do anything to protect their little ball. It's amazing. I don't know if they're paid or possessed. Uh, I don't think there's a difference at this point. And they're just doing everything to um, you know keep you a slave. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the guy the guy who said he's he's offended. He's offended. <laughs> yeah, he's offended. But here's the thing. Here's the uh, offended guy. All you need is one proof for the globe. If the earth is a physical globe, there should be tons of proofs. Just give me one. Go to my website, flatoutdave.com. Go to contact and then submit your proof and you win three Bitcoins. Okay? Just send your Bitcoin address with it if you're confident. But before you do, if you have the app, check out the frequently asked questions section because your stupid proof has been disproven in there. Absolutely. Here we are. Look, flat earth equals total and utter bollocks equals our universe is very real, evolving and expanding. Cannot understand how this is being even given airtime. Galileo yeah. is turning in his grave. And I said, and you so, are entitled to that opinion as others are entitled to theirs. Maybe you should watch it, Brian, instead uh, of displaying that you're bollocks. But I did you know it's amazing. I'm not even sure Galileo existed, but Galileo with his little telescope that he hand polished the lenses. He could see more on Mars than we can today with the greatest, biggest telescope yeah. that costs billions of dollars. He could, with his little 14 times zoom, can see more detail on Mars than anybody today can with the giant Lucifer telescope or anything else that the Vatican owns. It's, an, it's so stupid, but people cling. What about Eratosthenes, right? I have a whole Eratosthenes section on the frequently asked questions called Six and Shadows. Watch that. It, it's so, it's, it's such, it shows you the garbage. People say, well, flat earthers don't have a model. You want to see our model? You can go to, um, on the app, if you go to uh, the shopping cart, and then you go to the top right here, this is, uh, it's called um, themechanicalrealm.com, and it is a new documentary that just came out showing a 2,000-year-old physical working model for the flat Earth. It's amazing. Check this film out. It's fantastic. Where is, the, sorry, where can we, where can we get that? The, the mechanical realm.com. I think it's the mechanical realm or the mechanical realm film. I'm, I'm sure it's, I think it's the mechanical realm.com. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic um, expose on the Antikythera mechanism, which was found off of Greece uh, at a shipwreck. And they found it. It was this advanced computer 
two thousand years old, encrusted in you know rock, and they MRI'd it, and they figured it out, and they rebuilt it, and it shows the movement of the planets. It predicts eclipses, moon phases, and it's more accurate than some of the finest watches on Earth. It, it, wow. it, it yeah, it's amazing what it does. So again, they don't tell you about this in school. The 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 piece of it is wasn't a museum or isn't a museum. But when you look at it, it looks like a piece of cement with a gear wheel in it. You don't really know what it is. You don't really put it together. But these guys took it down, break it, broke it down, and show you what it is. Stuff that uh, Google isn't going to serve you. It's called the Antikythera Mechanism, themechanicalrealm.com. There's tons of movies and videos and all sorts of stuff. And I just encourage people, if you think I'm stupid, don't call me stupid. Take my Bitcoin. That's 100 grand. Three Bitcoins. One globe proof you don't have one though guaranteed dave it's been a pleasure and uh <laughs> I, i've 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 literally overdosed on dave all day it's been great and uh, and of course if you'd like to hear dave again but we we don't have the visuals yet but we are we are going to get you back on tnt dave will be on tnt radio live on sunday and um you know that's an international show and it covers some hard-hitting stuff but I just now, I, I I bring them natural healing and everything else. So yeah. Dave will be coming on there at 11 a.m. GMT. And then when we switch, because the week shows are switching to video already, and the weekend shows will be switching to video soon, we're going to get you on again and again, Dave. And uh, I'll be downloading the app. I'll be getting that. And I can tell you all the hours I've spent on Ashdown Forest with the sun going down or when it's dark, with nobody, no TV, nothing you very quickly become one with, with actually what's going on around you. You start to see the seasons. Today we found magic mushrooms. We found all kinds of mushrooms, but we, we spotted all the magic mushrooms growing today. And the trees, the seasons changing, the sky, it's all amazing and it's absolutely beautiful to watch. And um, there's no way uh, it's hurtling through space. I mean, it's just, it's scientifically impossible. Kate, I also have a homeschool section. If you want to dive deeper, um, I encourage people do not send your kids to college. I think I agree. I agree. Out, college is the number one depopulation method because, because of college, people don't have kids or don't have more kids because they're like, I, I have to worry about college. I only had two kids. I had a boy and a girl and blast. Uh, but I, I was like, oh, you know, the I, I was like my whole, I was like, I got to work for college. It's going to cost me a half a million dollars. And it's a, it's a scam. It's a total scam. All of the information in here, my favorite show, Crow triple seven radio, two hours in Crow, uh, $8 a month, no financing. You'll have a better college education than anyone else. You'll be able to navigate this world from health to truth to navigating the legal system. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic podcast. And I just encourage people don't save it. Send your kids to school. If you if you saved up money, great. Buy your kids a house, a duplex, and have them rent it out and manage it. Okay, you know, do something with that money. Don't waste it on uh, nonsensical indoctrination. Well, in this country, they they go to college and they get all these huge debts themselves. And uh, think about this. Know, I, I had four. I had four children. Think about this, Kate. <laughs> if uh, if if you. Uh, if you don't have kids, that's their number one goal. But if you do have kids and you don't have any money, you can still go to college because they will finance you no matter what because they want you in debt. They don't care anything other than you're in debt to them and living scared right. and, and, and working paycheck to paycheck. You know, you're going to go to college, then you're going to work at a fast food joint. What's the point in that? Uh, everyone in high school, when everyone was like, what college are you going to? And I was like, oh, excited. And a couple of friends are like, oh, you know, I'm not going to college. You're not? I was like, that was so foreign to me. Well, all of those friends that went into building school and plumbing, you know, plumbing and went just, just to work for somebody, they're all retired. They're all doing fantastic. They're on their boats. And uh, life is good. These are all the people that didn't go to college. And everyone that's yeah, going to college, they're working their asses off. Son. He went and did his apprenticeship to be an accountant instead of going yep. to university. We call it university here. Right. And here I am. I went to nursing school, as I've been told lots of times, you haven't even got a university. Well, nursing school now is, is university, but it was called nursing school when I went. Yeah. But I, I'm doing what I want to do. Well, I'm that, doing what I want to do. And, and, and again, 
again, like if you want to be a surgeon, a, a, a orthopedic surgeon, awesome. Go to school for that. Nursing, a very important profession. There's lots of stuff. But if you want to just go into business, you know, want to start your own business, start your own business. You know, learn what you want. You used to have to go, like the greatest professor, it's like, oh, the, the uh, uh, Walter Lewin, the greatest professor, you have to go to MIT. So you, you'd go to MIT to see him. Now you can just see it all online. It's all free. It's all online. Just go and study what you want to study. Right, learn the real mathematics, vortex mathematics, or sacred geometry. They'll never teach you that in school. Right, that's the stuff that they want you. They don't even want you knowing about because, as the Rockefellers say, and we'll wrap it up with that, is they want a, uh, a society of workers, not thinkers. Exactly. Yeah, Dave, it's been a pleasure, and I'm just going to say, nursing school does not teach you how to nurse, and I learned all of that. <laughs> after I got cancer. That's why it's, we've got the British Nursing Alliance uh, on Telegram. It will actually become something very soon. Um, but that's why, because you, you've you been taught wrong. They're teaching you all wrong. And uh, thank you so much for coming on, Dave. And I will hear you again on Sunday. And just remind everybody, flatearthdave.com. Get the Everything app. can be found there. If you have, you can get the app there. The app is three dollars, and then if you want to use the Friend Finder, the whole social media part, it's eleven dollars a year. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, but you don't need to. And uh, it just makes researching a hell of a lot easier. And uh, $11 everyone, dollars everyone, a year. If eleven dollars a year, but you don't. It's three dollars for the app, one time charge, and it's only eleven if you want to, you know, communicate and do group calls and all sorts of stuff. Um, but just check it out, read the reviews, you know, and, and see, see what you think. Um, if you want to book me for a show, just there's a, you know, contact Dave book. Um, but if you're going to send me a thing, send me, you know, link me to your show, tell me what you want to talk about and then we'll start a conversation and uh, I'll get you a booking link. And there's all sorts of stuff. You're getting really busy, Dave. All of a I sudden, am. I am. All busy. of a sudden, I, I have to say, all of a sudden, there is a big interest in flat earth. It's like yeah. it was trundling along, trundling along. And all of a sudden, it's just gone into fourth gear. Kate, it's not the takedown of the system that's here. It's the ignoring of the system and building a new system. So when Flat Earth, you know, yeah, it's going to happen, I agree. I agree it's gonna happen overnight. And then we're just going to start our parallel uh, world. And everyone's going to want to just live in that. And, and then imagine if everybody ignored the government. What power would they have? They'd have nothing. Nothing. They're, they're microbes on my ass. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Well, I live in Covidsville. There's only yeah. me in the two the two street avenues where I live, and I'm like public enemy number one. <laughs> so I liked when I. That's why I I was quite happy today to say to someone, "Oh yeah, I'm interviewing someone for Flat Earth Dave," and yeah. they're like, "What?" But you know what? And Thank you so much. You've been a fab guest. The 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 flat is not a description. Is not a shape. Flat is a description of level and horizontal. We're not rotating. We're not. You know, we live on a topographical plane where water is always level. So level Earth is a great, better term. But I like flat Earth because it triggers people, and I'm just oh, about. Yes. I'm, I want to. I want to poke them. So flat Earth, and then we have the True Earth Summit, which is coming up uh, the beginning of December, a virtual summit. You'll be able to find that on my website, flatearthdave.com. That's something everybody can attend uh, via Zoom. Uh, it's it's fantastic, and you you'll want to do it. The great presentations by medical health people, flat Earth presentations, all sorts of stuff. It's it's two full days, so that's coming up. Look for that on my website in um, a couple of days. It should be listed. Fantastic. And on the back of what Dave said, I'm going to be bringing you someone soon who's going to tell you, he's a doctor, that the earth, the heart, it's not a pump. It's not a pump, people. It's really not. Mike Wickerson? <laughs> no, it's not. But if you've got his contact details, please oh, send them. I do. Them. I do. Please Mike. Email them. You're now, I, my, I, now my email, bitch. I want all the, the contacts. Yeah. <laughs> on on, on uh, the more resources section, I have a, 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 his whole channel is here um, called Stellium 7 right here. And it's called Biogeology. Mind blowing. Now, when I met him years ago, he's like, Dave, you got to watch my video. And I watched his video and I'm like, that's ah, too far fetched. And then he's like, you got to watch the other video. And after a while, I ended up watching it. And I'm like, hmm. Then I watched the third one. I'm like, oh, damn. And then I just watched the rest of his stuff. And I'm like, it's undeniable. It's just like flat earth. When you, when you think flat earth is the biggest thing, there's other mind blowing things. Check there out are. biogeology. Check out Tataria and the mud floods, the old world. Oh, I've, I've, I've been down that one. 
I'll yeah. beat you at home. In, yep. in, the home, in the homeschool section, this guy, Jake, I'm the improbable dreamer. Start off. That's a little short. He's like, a, he's a uh, TikTok guy and, uh, and uh, Instagram guy. His stuff is, will will knock your socks off. You're like, wow. Like giants. There's no giants aren't a theory. Oh, he's got, vid- uh, yeah, he's got video. Them. He's got video of giants. Okay. I've been on that one as well. And then yeah. this this guy, um, it's called uh, My Lunch Break. Uh, fantastic. He finds like an old building, finds out the story of when it was founded, not builded, it was found. And uh, and he shows how ridiculous it is and tears them apart. And it's pure comedy. Like, watch this with your kids. Your kid's going to now understand that our history is a lie and learn. I'm going to have a sense of humor too. It's, the stuff is hysterical. And then, of course, John Levy, the classic on old world stuff. Um, but there's all sorts of stuff in here. Marty Leeds does a Sunday morning um, Gnostic church service, flat earth related. Amazing. One of the best preachers. But don't watch it if you don't like four letter words because he loves using them the right way. Okay. Well, that's great. I, I just would like to say that I am now going on a long sabbatical. I'll be doing no more shows for six months because I'm Whoa. going to literally nosedive into flat earth dave's app uh, no that's not true that's not true you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> no, just, you know you're what? gonna uh, do whole, flat earth uh, shows the whole the whole heart thing not a pump i mean the stuff yeah. that i've come constantly come up people i don't care hey uh, you need to have you need to have sophia smallstorm on about the heart she's amazing and so many other things you know who please Sophia send is, me right? all their, please send me all their contact details because my fam at unity news then i've got my fam I've got uh, Awake the Nation. I'm going to get you on that. Then we've got Sons of Liberty I do on a Saturday. I do all, anything to do with the body. And yeah. and then, of course, TNT, and they want me to have another show soon. So, you know, uh, I seem to be getting – people seem to like my, my drivel. Everything <laughs> is electrical. Everything is electrical yeah. magnetic. We're, we, we're, we're, heart, we're connected so to the earth because of the electrostatic charge. And – our hearts charge our blood, so our blood has the energy to go to the tip of our little pinky toe and make it back. It's not a That's pump. why I walk yeah. without shoes a lot every single day, but in the summer I do it, and I sleep with my feet on a grounding mat. You know, the I, I get I get attacked all the time, which just proves that I'm over the point. But the later, one of the latest attacks is hysterical. Is doesn't Dave own a chair? Because if you notice, I'm standing, right? I'm standing. You know why? Because sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is the worst. I'm actually standing on a wobble board right now, so I got so I'm. I'm oh, it constantly... gives you great, great core strength. It's and I don't even notice that I'm up. I do like hours and hours and hours. I don't even notice. Notice sitting, my, my your ass hurts after a while sitting for a long time. So yeah, that, they're sit, they're criticizing me good. for standing. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's yeah, all I, they have. I, they have no glow proofs. I don't sit for very long because I walk yeah. so every day. I get three, it. Three hours, and and I sit if I'm doing my stuff with my laptop, but you know that you're right. The heart is electrical, the sinoatrial node it kicks off from. And uh, you know, the amount of people because of rubber shoes, that's why whether people want to call me a grifter or not, it's they're so cheap. The grounding mats. <laughs> I put my feet on that mat. I'm asleep within minutes. Wait, I have this plugged in uh, into a little <laughs> pad and I I'm grounded while I'm standing here. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? There you go. Groundology. Stop buying all the garbage that you you buy people for Christmas, which is just rubbish. Half of it's made by poor people with no arms, lepers in darkest India or somewhere. But uh, these are great. These grounding so, mats are so good. Sophia makes Sophia Smallstar at her store Avatar Products makes a great handmade silver uh, mattress wrap, and then you sleep on it, and you're grounded. And it's, wow. it's, it's fantastic. It's I just hate sleeping without it. So, you know, this is where uh, the, the the way they change the shoes and oh, you know, yeah. the dogs. Yeah, it's all connected. And people people have laughed at me so much. I get asked all the time to put, and I do now, people want my name on things to flog it. Who'd have thought? Once I was Britain's most dangerous woman, now they want my name on things. Um, but I, I'm really careful what I affiliate to. But yep. grounding mats, they're fab. You've got a yep. baby that's screaming, crying. You you put that baby on the mat, or you put your feet under the mat as you feed it. Feed it yep. yourself, obviously. Yep. Baby's you got to you gotta be careful. There's crappy ones out there that have bad capacitors. I don't know all the technical stuff, but you got to get a got to get a good one. Yeah, the groundology uh, is. Uh, I researched them all. 
There you go. Groundology. The same as um, having everything, you know, I'm hardwiring as I'm talking to you. It's not Wi-Fi. It's hardwired. So there's lots of things you can do. But look, Dave, absolute pleasure. I tell you, I was super excited as the day went on. And then you started nothing. Anyway, I'm not worthy. (laughs) I can't ask you anything. But you know what? It's it's fantastic for me. I I kind of already thought it, but this is so that Tataria and the mud floods. I mean, the more I find out, the more I feel at peace. This is the other thing. It's not a case of that it's going to irritate you and make you agitated. It's going to make you joyful. It's going to make you laugh. And you're going to be more at peace. I have no fear of dying because you don't die. And I've been with a lot of people as they leave this body in my nursing career. Traumatically yanked out, whatever, dying slowly, aborted. I've seen it all. I I have no fear. I, I... I don't have any fear of dying. I have fear of missing out. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have FOMO. Like I don't want to die because this is the most exciting time in the world to be alive. This is like amazing that this world is an incredible place. The, the apocalypse, their unveiling of the truth is happening right in front of our eyes. There couldn't be a better time to be alive. In my opinion, I think I we think- chose to be here at this time. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I bought myself recently some Impala roller boots. And uh, I thought, Roller boots. I'm gonna, yeah, fun. I bought myself some Impala. They're the Rolls Royce. They're the Fabidou ones. Roller boots, because I used to do it as a teenager. And I thought, you don't Roll, age. Are they me. like roller blades or they're boots? No, the roller the... boots. They're 1970s roller boots. I bought myself bright pink and lemon ones. They're fabulous. I bought myself the knee pads. Yeah. And everyone was like, somebody actually said to me, you're not getting a bit old for that. Are you not worried that you're going to injure yourself? And I was like, well, whatever. I used to skate in my teens, and I'm going to be seen down at Eastbourne. Nice. <laughs> I'm not in the hospital. I'm going to be on those skates. But yeah, you know what? It's my birthday soon. We're not doing birthdays anymore. This is the last birthday. Birthdays, birthdays are a whole spell. You, you, it's it's candle cake magic. You have cake. You got a candle. You not sing. You dance. It's not a whole. It, it's a whole ritual. It birthdays is. are finished. You should celebrate your conception day. Right? Yeah. Well, I want. You know what? listen feel free to send me gifts folks (laughs) i'm joking but we are actually uh going to be renting the local church hall to get on my roller boots indoors first just me and my friend it's a party for two (laughs) uh, can i make a a plug not for something of mine i had on you know who matt landman is no Uh, tell us Matt Landman is uh, the number one guy out there uh, dealing with chemtrails and the spraying of our skies. And he did the movie Franken Skies. And uh, if, if just to go to frankenskies.com or Franken Skies movie or just search it. It's on Rumble. It's everywhere. Um, watch that video if you want to learn about our skies. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's proven patents. Yeah, we, we know. Every- We're chemtrailers. It, it's one of the best, best videos. But Matt has a company called Spiro, right? And uh, it, it's the true tinfoil hat. He has these amazing quality hats with silver lining in them. So I just got this this black one. It's the greatest hat. It's so comfortable. And uh, it when I have it on, I don't know if it's it's placebo or not. I, I, my mind calms down, like I, because I, I live in a condo area, a condo complex. There's 30 Wi-Fi networks. I can I can yeah. see here. So when I put that on, I'm just like, it's got to be doing something. And it really, it's amazing. So his stuff is high quality. It's on the app. Go to, I think it's Spiro.com and you get 10% off if you use the term flat earth. I oh, will do that. I and, have no Wi-Fi I, look. And I make nothing I off of this. Do, I want. No Wi-Fi. I have to I plug want, in. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt does um, such good work. I just feel like, and, you know, people, whatever, you want to support people, but hey, buy something for yourself and support Matt in the process. But That's this a stuff great is amazing. idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to get an affiliate with him. Have you got his email as well? I, I will give you his email, but I don't have an affiliate with him. I just have, I just want people to buy his stuff. Yeah. He sent me a hat. Okay. And, and, yeah, that's and what I mean. I, I, there it is. Frankenstein. I've got, I've got links where I don't make any money off it. that people get a discount. Yeah, that that's it. So um, I will send you, if you send you just remind me in an email and I'll send you the stuff. Okay. I, I got, I have two, I have two more interviews coming up, so I'm going to be a little busy. But, I'll um, stream with you. Franken skies, watch it even if you know about chemtrails, because then you'll be better equipped to talk to people about it. 
you'll be better equipped. And uh, he sells his DVDs for $3. So if you want to give someone a DVD, buy a dozen of his DVDs and stick them in everyone's stocking. Just make sure, you know, people I don't have buy them. everybody anything anymore because I don't right. agree with any of it. But they're getting grounding mats this year. There you go. <laughs> My kids are. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I say. Like, just buy them something. Practical. An awake, an awake product. An awake product. Like, here's, here's a book called uh, Flat Earth Frequently Asked Questions, FAQs. It's a great book. It's a coffee table book and it has every question, pictures and all sorts of stuff. It's fantastic. Put it on your coffee table. Someone's out over, they pick it up. That's you actually know. it. That's a guest toilet book. This is the guest That's toilet, a toilet guest book. Toilet Put it, book. And, and, and they'll read one thing and then they'll be screwed because once you read it, once you pick it up, it's like leprosy. You're, you're finished. This is, you on your website. It. this is on your website. No, that's not on my website. Flat Earth FAQs. It's, in the, it's on the book section in the app. Um, if you just click the click the book section, and um, it should be somewhere in there. It's in there somewhere. So does that come out from a central place, Dave? Because I would really like a signed copy once I've bought it. Oh, there it is. It's right there at the top. Um, well, that's from Eric Dubay. I've never spoken to the guy. I'm not fond of him, but his book is great, so I promote his book. His book Excellent. is fantastic, right? Well, that's it. We're all going to be on there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Flat, flat, flat Earth Dave and myself and uh, on another episode of Unity News and I think we should we should have a final word although I didn't do one because I was too busy listening to Flat Earth Dave all day so I will see you all next week on Unity News Network and now from a final word from myself